Greetings, Guardians. My name is Bife here. So, I come to you all bearing potentially sad tidings. It looks like the Into the Light update will not necessarily include a return of the old tower. Bummer. But this area that we're getting in the Into the Light update is still something that is technically at the back of the old tower. I think it's the area that we actually explored in the Zero Hour mission, the Cryptarchy's vaults and the storage area which Shax has now commandeered in order to um, better arm us against the Witnesses' forces invading the city. And it also has some strange new bits and pieces to it, including whatever the heck is at the back. So that's concerning. All that being said, I think we should talk still in this moment about the thing that we thought we were going to be getting, because you know what? A lot of interest was garnered for it, and I'm feeling nostalgic. So, let's go ahead and talk about the old tower. I know a lot of us were jonesing for its return, and there are tons of stories about this place. So, let's talk about our old home, the original, not Destiny 2's different version. But first, a question for you. And if you're a PvP gamer, this is actually particularly a moment of relevance. Do you enjoy fast-paced movement, and a lot of movement tech, and all of that stuff that binds together a really cohesive PvP experience? Well, if you do, boy do I have a sponsor for you. It's Tribes. Tribes 3 Rivals. Now, if you're an old-school gamer, you might remember the name Tribes, and yes, it's the same deal, the same franchise, the one that has a long history of having some of the most compelling FPS movement and combating gaming. I'm excited to take this sponsor on today because honestly, I don't know how many people have heard of Tribes. There's this entire generation of gamers that watches my channel and absolutely loves movement tech, I'm sure, that has probably just never heard of it. And if you want to know what kind of movement you're going to expect in Tribes, just take a look at the gameplay. Sure, jetpacks are a thing in this game, but the zipping over the hills that you're seeing is called skiing, and that is basically Tribes movement in a nutshell. You are going incredibly fast, you can propel yourself faster with your weapons, you are reacting to the enemy as you fight and duel mid-air. This is entirely the hallmark of Tribes, and it seems like it has been captured pretty well by Tribes 3 rivals. So if really fast-paced combat sounds like your thing, you might want to give Tribes a try. And if you are intent on doing that, check out the link in my description today. Tribes 3 Rivals is on Steam now in Early Access, and it's discounted for the first two weeks of Early Access. So if you want to grab a better price for it, now is the time to go ahead and do that and get in on the ground floor. Be warned though, you don't have a lot of time to do it. So if you do want to jump in and try out this incredible fast-paced movement experience for yourself and master it over time, well, now is your right time to do that. Thanks again to Nacon and Daredrop and Tribes 3 Rivals for sponsoring this video. Anyway, back to the lore. So, to understand the old towers, you need to understand the state of the last city and its exact chronology and history. The reality that we all need to be keenly aware of is that the history of the last city doesn't have an exact chronology. The exact timeline of events is deliberately left unclear and almost mythical from a developer standpoint. But in universe, it's the clear consequence of society rebuilding in the aftermath of an apocalypse, and everything being a little bit shoddy in terms of record keeping. There are no exact dates when it comes to the construction of the last city. What we do know is that the Titans built the great walls that surround the last city. Orders of Titans such as the Stoneborn and the Pilgrim Guard would have been instrumental in the early construction process. However, Later, it was the Stoneborn Order specifically that would take to guarding the walls of our home. And at eight points along those great walls, the last city would erect towers, strongholds for the Guardians to coordinate from. These towers would have helped the city weather countless storms, including the now famous Battle of the Twilight Gap, when three fallen houses descended upon the last city and nearly took it for good. However, whilst the last city has seen great heights where eight towers were along its walls, eventually there would be a slow and steady decline and more and more of them would fall into disrepair. Events such as the rebellion of the Concordat and the final siege at Bannerfall that took place on one of the towers would certainly not help to keep them all well maintained or in a general state of readiness for war. By the time that we first arrived in the tower, it was THE tower, 
because there was only one left in good working order. This, however, was our home, the place where we could all congregate and strike out from, and for three years we did just that. But that would all change, of course, when the Red Legion invaded the last city and destroyed the tower in their opening strike. We would walk through its smoldering remains in our opening defense of the last city. Our once noble home was reduced to nothing more than a ruin atop the wall. But there was a moment when we did manage to revisit the tower sometime after the Red War's conclusion, during the Zero Hour Crisis, when Eremis and her raiders attempted to make off with the outbreak perfected. Either way, the old tower is filled with stories. Sadly, my Destiny 1 B-roll of the tower is somewhat limited, but I'll do my best to talk about what I can. Over by the tower hangar, where Amanda Holiday used to ply her craft, you can find an old rundown area set up with lights and furniture. This was the old hunter's bar, and it was a spot for recreation and merriment, and it led to a few storied events. To cover just one of them really briefly, it was here that the very storied hunter Pahanin introduced two of his friends to each other, the Titan Wei Ning and the warlock Ariana III. The two were about as different as one could imagine, save for their desire to take action in defense of the last city. Wei Ning was a titan who was of the striker disposition, all about destruction up close and personal. Ariana, on the other hand, was a fiery sun singer, sworn loyally to the Praxic Creed, one who clearly takes her vows and duties seriously, and even more seriously should she break them. As it turns out, Pahanin, on that day, played the superb matchmaker. Ariana III and Wei Ning would go on to fall in love, and even though their story was tragically ended by Crota, the son of Oryx, it would eventually tie into events that brought about the destruction of that same hive god, as well as his father and the devastation of both of Crota's aunts, Savathun and Zivorath in some capacity. All of this is because, well, Ariana tried to avenge Wei Ning's death, and as a result, Eris Morn joined her and ended up in the Hellmouth. Without Ariana, there is no Eris Morn as we know her today, and that started Eris's great vendetta against the Hive, the vengeance that drives her. Moving onward and ignoring the old faction posts in the hangar of the future war cult and dead orbit, we can find the main tower courtyard, the first place we landed in the last city, and the site where we found Zavala standing in defense of our home during the Red War's opening hours. We could take our time here to walk downward into the Vanguard Hall, where the original Consensus Council and the Vanguard would meet. In this storied room, a dozen or so different Vanguard leaders over the course of the city's history the Speaker and the various heads of the invited factions would all work for the betterment of the last city. In this room, many a consequential decision was made. It was here that Kay decided on a plan to attack Oryx's Dreadnought. It was here that the Great Disaster was set in motion despite the urging of Lord Shax. It was here that Osiris argued with the Speaker about the danger presented by the Vex. The echoes of this room would all be silenced in the opening moments of the Red War, where now there is little more than an empty shell to remember it by. Arguably my favorite part of the old tower is the rear concourse where diplomats and envoys could set up their premises while they visited. Petrovenge once set up shop here on special assignment from the reef, and Lord Saladin would regularly host his iron banner stand in this wing of the tower. It just had a marvelous view, and, well, it was peaceful. But there are a few parts of the tower that raise more questions than the speaker's section of the tower. Away from the hangar's noise and the political intrigue of the Vanguard Hall, away from the guardians sorting their vaults in the courtyard or knocking back pints in the bar, there was the speaker's orrery. I say orrery, and perhaps that is the wrong word, but I think there's no better way to describe the section of the tower that's found in the tower north. It is dominated by the speaker's chamber and the strange device at its heart. Presumably this apparatus helped to monitor the traveler, but in truth, all throughout Destiny 1 nobody knew the exact function of this device. This place was where the speaker first informed us of the encroaching darkness that was starting to drain the light of the traveler, 
and it was here that we vowed to strike back against the dangers lurking at the edge of our system. It was also in this place that three years later the Cabal would find the Speaker, abduct him into the custody of Dominus Gaul, and eventually that led to his death. The Old Tower is a place that isn't just full of memory and history, but also promise. The tower looms over the last city as a bastion set alone against the sky above. It represents the Guardians in more ways than one. It was, to many in the last city, the promise of ample protection from the enemies of humanity, and in the breaking of that bastion, that promise too could be broken. It also represents a few other less fortunate things about the Guardians. It represents their separation from the citizens they deign to protect. It represents the hubris that they endured and suffered under in the face of destructive forces such as the Cabal, the Black Fleet, and the Hive. Now that it is destroyed, it also, I believe, represents the current state of humanity, where we may well be at the precipice of true disaster. With the worlds pressing in around us, and our consensus having long been in a state of disarray, with the factions gone, one of the Vanguard mentors dead, and the Speaker dead, the Tower's broken shadow is now a testament to the grandeur that the Guardians of the Last City once protected, a grandeur that now has faded. But still, this state of golden renewal might yet be found if the Tower is to rise again. If we can only defeat the Witness, if we can overcome this one final foe, maybe things will change. With the assistance of our allies, and the remarkable discovery that a second enclave of humanity lives on in Neomuna, the prospect of the formerly last city being returned to its former glory is now more alive than ever. If we do see the tower rebuilt, that'll be a sign of the changing times for destiny. Towers have always represented the story of the Guardians, the last city and humanity at large on Earth. At the apex of what might have been our greatest triumph over evil, watching one tower return might be a signal that there is a brighter future ahead than some of us suppose. The winds are changing. We simply have to hope that the direction is not one that dashes us upon the rocks of history, and instead shepherds us to brighter shores. But that's all from me for now. Hopefully you enjoyed this little look back. It's always nice to be a bit nostalgic. This is a quicker video, and it's purely done on the basis of the fact that it's fun to talk about this. But also, I need to talk to you guys about something very quickly. There is a 80-minute video in store for you all on the Precursors and the Final Shape Collector's Edition. I wanted to take my time on that video, and also, frankly, 80 minutes worth of content is a lot. So, yeah, uh, that's why there's been such a delay in content over the last week. I have been working on that, and it has frankly been a right pain to get it all done. But it's on the way, Martin is editing it right now, so there's more content coming down the line for you all. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave your thoughts down below in the comments section, and leave a like, especially if you want to see parts of the old tower return at some point in the future. And of course, if you enjoy Destiny content generally, or want to know more about the world of Destiny, go ahead and hit subscribe and the bell next to subscribe to turn on those email notifications. But, as per usual, know that your viewership, as always, is quite enough for me. And that in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Bife. Orodasia Arastra. I'll see you, Starside.